First at four, Michigan's Attorney General cracks down on sex abuse allegations in the Boy Scouts. We'll talk about the charges against this man. The NFL is teaming up with the city of Detroit for a really big event. We'll tell you when and where. Also, it's the slap scene around the world. Now, actor Will Smith could face more consequences. And we have reaction from a Detroit comedian who knows Chris Waugh. Hey, Paul. Yeah, hey, Karen. You know, the calendar says March. The calendar says spring. But we have more winter weather on the way. In fact, it could be the type that causes some problems. I'll have your updated forecast straight ahead. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew, First at 4. The first person charged in Michigan's investigation of sexual abuse in the Boy Scouts faced a judge today. Mark Chapman is facing 10 counts of criminal sexual conduct. He was involved in the Boy Scouts of America working with a troop in Roseville years ago. Prosecutors say he sexually assaulted two boys. The former scoutmaster was denied bond on first degree criminal sexual conduct charges. There are concerns. There might be more victims. If you have new information, you should contact the Attorney General's office. Today marks the 11th day of the Whitmer kidnapping trial as federal prosecutors continue to present their case. They're targeting four Wolverine Watchmen members, each charged with conspiracy to commit kidnapping. Today, a key FBI informant testified he took some of the men to check out the M31 bridge near the governor's summer home as part of a plan to blow up that bridge. He says the men wanted a slow police response in hopes of storming the governor's home. Today at 5, defense attorneys take their turn. Sean Lay brings us more testimony in a live report. Many Americans could be a step closer to another COVID booster shot. We'll talk about that process in a moment. But first, the state of Michigan reporting 1,200 new COVID-19 cases in the past three days. Daily average of about 419, down slightly from last Monday. Seven-day positivity rate has edged above 4% last week, but it is now back to 3.5%. The state also recorded six more virus-related deaths since Friday. And it looks like the FDA is moving closer to authorizing a second booster shot for millions of Americans, but not everyone. Both Moderna and Pfizer are seeking approval for a fourth dose. A few days ago, sources say FDA officials had settled on giving Americans age 65 and older the option of getting a second booster. Well, now they might expand eligibility to anyone 50 and older. Experts are still divided on whether a fourth shot is necessary. A decision could come as soon as next week. Well, get this, the Detroit Lions have announced the 2024 NFL Draft will be held right here in the city of Detroit. The announcement featured legendary running back Barry Sanders, businessman Dan Gilbert, and dozens of other Detroiters. Now, the area around Campus Martius and Hart Plaza will serve as the site for the draft. Now, this is big news for the city and, of course, football fans. Bernie Smilovitz and Jamie Edmonds teaming up to bring you more on Local 4 News at 5. In our first forecast, it sure does not feel like spring. We're kind of stuck with some very cold weather right now. Here's meteorologist Paul Gross, and there's no sunshine, and it's not really warming up either. I tell you, you know, Karen, speaking of the draft, I feel like the meteorologist to be named later in a trade or something with this weather that we've had. You can see we've had some sunshine today. I mean, you see some of these fair weather cumulus clouds, a few more here in the downtown area than what some other folks are seeing around the area. But it's been a cold day. There are some areas that have not even made it to 30 degrees. We just barely got there in Adrian, just barely got there at Metro Airport. And you can see these wind chills well down to near 20 or in the teens. It is a cold day out there, just like yesterday was a very cold day. And you can see on the satellite imagery, you can see some of that patchy cloud cover that's coming through the area. Also, lake effect snow screaming in off of uh, Lake Huron there, the Grand Bend area there in Ontario. So we're not done with winter yet, but for the evening hours falling through the 20s if you're not there already, and uh, we're going to be in the teens by tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about the freezing rain coming our way in just a few minutes, Karen. Thank you, Paul. Ukraine hinting it is ready to make some compromises to end a Russian invasion. Another round of peace talks will start tomorrow. Ukraine's president says he's ready to declare his country's neutrality, giving up plans to join NATO. But he, but the question is, will he be willing to give up territory as well? Russia is now saying it's focused on securing Donbas, which is a Russian-speaking region of Ukraine where rebels have been fighting a separatist war for eight years. President Zelensky is also asking for a face-to-face -face with Putin. But the Kremlin has ruled that out for now. The new peace talks will be held in Turkey. We have breaking news from Washington. President Joe Biden just released his new budget. He rolled out the plan with a promise to millions of Americans and a demand that wealthy people and corporations 
pay their fair share. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom and Kim, the president spent some time talking about taxes. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Yes, the president says his spending plan reflects his values and what he believes are the values of most Americans. Here are some of the highlights. The president is proposing a total of $5.8 trillion in federal spending for fiscal 2023. That includes $795 billion for defense spending, also $915 billion for domestic programs, with the remaining balance going to mandatory spending on proposals such as Social Security, Medicare, Medicare, and interest on the national debt. The proposal also includes a minimum 20% tax on the incomes of households worth $100 million or more. He also promised anyone making $400,000 or less will not see their taxes raised. The president says he's seeking a fairer tax system. Right now, billionaires pay an average rate of 8% on their total income. 8%, that's the average they pay. Now, I'm a capitalist. But uh, just, I want, I, I, if you can make a billion bucks, great. Just pay your fair share. Pay a little bit. A firefighter and a teacher pay more than double, double the tax rate that a billionaire pays. That's not right. Of course, it's not clear if the president will have enough support in Congress to get his plan passed. The so-called billionaire's tax was debated in Congress late last year and failed to clear the Senate. Many weeks of debate to come, that's for sure. And we will, of course, keep you posted. For now, we'll send it back to you, Karen. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Federal judge in California has said it's more likely than not that former President Trump corruptly tried to stop the certification of the 2020 presidential election. Now, that conclusion comes in a ruling against attorney John Eastman. Eastman was trying to avoid turning over more than 100 emails to the Congressional Committee investigating the U.S. Capitol attack. He has now been ordered to turn them over. In that ruling, the judge said Eastman and the former president may have been planning a crime as they sought to disrupt congressional certification. Currently, neither man has been charged with any crime. Comedian Chris Rock will not be pressing criminal charges against the new Oscar winner, Will Smith, over a slap at the Oscars. But Smith may face further consequences from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. And it all started with this joke about Smith's wife. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. And while Smith laughed at first, seconds later he walked up to the stage, slapped rock, before shouting profanities to defend his wife. Late today, the Academy is condemning Smith's actions and will launch a formal review of the slap, saying Smith could face further consequences. Our Paula Tutman has been digging into what we can learn from that very public confrontation. He didn't win an Oscar for his role as Muhammad Ali, but that rope-a-dope stunt Will Smith pulled on Chris Rock last night has people reeling. <laughs> oh, wow! Like Mike Bonner, who's not only pals with Chris Rock, but as a Detroit-born comedian, has thrown a few comedic jabs himself once or twice. That was out of hand. That walking across the thing and strumming to the stage and slapping Chris Rock would cost you $20 million if it was me. Dr. Margarita Gurry, who goes by the brand Dr. Red Shoes, is a psychologist and expert in bad behavior. We're not allowed, just because someone else crossed the line, to be violent, mean, or uncivil, ever. It's not okay. And as my mother would say, mijita no, don't go there. She says under no circumstances is it okay to initiate violence. The simplicity it is is never okay to be mean or harm somebody in response to what they say or do. Never. Unless we're defending a life, that's it. But there's also the idea of being a public figure and all that comes with, especially when you are nationally and internationally known and renowned. So take Ricky Gervais, who makes sport of pointed jabs at the Hollywood elite during his numerous stints as an award show host. It's almost expected, and no one has punched him in the face for calling them a pervert, pedophile, or calling out struggles with drug addiction. If you do win tonight, remember that no one cares about that award as much as you do. Some people are so tempting to slap. I know your hand gets twitchy, right? Rakata, you know, mihita, rak. But, you know, it doesn't help anybody. Don't do it. Remember you're awesome. We're all wonderful. We're all awful. Get over both. And remember, in the moment, will the world be better if I do this thing? Will I be better? With, will my family be better? Those are the questions to ask.
And while some might say that defending your wife is fair use of violence, most will tell you it is not, particularly when there are other ways to address hurt and anger, like the sharp slice of words as opposed to a sharp right to the jaw. I think that it was a, it was a thing that was building up inside of Will Smith in regards to other statements that he had made that was at a boiling point. Wow. Chris, his temperament was excellent. He should get an award for that show last night. Okay. He did a phenomenal job, and he should be celebrated. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what? As humans, we are emotional beings, but Dr. Guri cautions that if you get angry and feel like you actually have to strike someone, she says, wait 30 seconds, and then if it still feels like a good idea, wait 30 more seconds, and then if it still feels like a good idea, she says, ponder the fuzz on your knees until the logic and the compassion return. Striking is never a good idea. Okay, so what is it like on the other side of a smart aleck comment? Coming up at 5.30, we talk to Detroit's queen of the blues, and she's gonna tell us actually what she has done when people insult her. And that's coming up at 5.30. I'll see you then. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Paula. Well, there were <clears throat> also a few feel-good, memorable moments at the Oscars. We're going to highlight a few of those in case you missed them. So if you did watch the show, see if your list matches ours. We'll show you the, that in less than 15 minutes.